Okay, I'm going to introduce our speaker and we can begin. Please settle down. This, as long as I've been living here, this is the biggest crowd I've ever seen. Um, a, a, a couple of the board members thought this would be a good opportunity for me to remind you all on the way out, you can fill out an application to run for the board for next year. <laughs> but, okay, um, on a more serious note, although that was a serious request, um, about three years ago, the Purchasing and Negotiating Committee negotiated our current contract with Comcast. The negotiations were quite prolonged. Toward the end of the negotiations, we heard about a, a new thing, an X1 platform. We didn't know too much about it, but we spoke to the Comcast people we were negotiating with, and they told us that it was available at Comcast locations up north, like Chicago, Philadelphia, the big cities, but it wasn't yet available down here. Well, we continued to negotiate, and then we found out it was just about to become available down here. And then they told us they were not including it in any contracts for bulk communities. So we said, OK, but we weren't happy. And by the final negotiation, we said, what can you do for us? And they told us when the X1 became available, we could have it for $2 a home extra. And we said, OK, can you put that in the contract? And the answer was no, but we shook hands on it. Anyway, to make the story short, I was in charge of the purchasing committee at that time. I got a call one day from the then president of the board. I got tired of waiting, so I called the vice president of Comcast, and I have great news. We're getting the X1 for $5.95 a month. I wasn't so happy. <laughs> but I said, what do you mean $5.95? They promised us two. He said, well, I made a deal with the the regional vice president, 595. So there's not much I could have done about it. Over the years, we've been in touch with Comcast over various issues, and we always brought up the sore subject of the X1. And I'll be perfectly honest, one day out of the clear blue, the, regional, the current regional vice president, whose name is Raphael Visbal, and would be proud to see all these people, said to me, how about if I give you the X1 for free? I didn't ask him for it at that point because I had given up. I, was, I had it. I was paying the five ninety five, as were many others. Anyway, I said, okay. So here we are today. It's not part of our contract. They didn't have to do it. I'm not chilling for Comcast. And Seth will tell you. Seth, by the way, Seth Parker is our uh, community customer service rep. And he told me I'm a, I'm a bulldog with Comcast. I'm, I'm very tough on them. So I'm not trying to shill, but they didn't have to do this. And you say to yourself, ah, big deal, $5.95 a month. But I did the math before, and if the whole community gets it, it's, it's costing them like $56,000, $57,000 a year. So it's not small change, and we have three more years on our contract. That being said, I'm going to let Seth explain what it is and why I think it's a great benefit, and everybody ought to look toward getting it. So, Seth Parker. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, folks. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the X1. I am going to point out uh, what I think are some of the main um, uh, factors that are going to differentiate it. We will talk about some tips and tricks. Um, I, I think it'll be equally informative for people that already have the X1. By the way, how many people already have X1 here? Okay. All right. So, so not, not, you know, not too many. The majority do not. And, of course, it's going to point out you know, some of the main things that people that are going to be getting the X1 can look forward to. Um, the, uh, the, the first thing I want to do is just talk a little bit about how the program is going to be handled with, with you know, doing the X1 implementation. Okay, so, so we're not going to be doing anything here. Okay, this is all going to be, you, you know, it, it, you, you, you would have to call customer service. Okay, 
Uh, there is going to be a $50 install fee to have a technician come out. Okay. Uh, you can do a self-install, which is where we mail it to you, but that will be, that's going to be $9.95 for the shipping and handling. Okay, so it's not a free install. I just, want to, I just want to make that clear. Okay, the platform fee is being waived. Okay, it's not a free install. Okay, and that, the platform fee being waived is starting on January 1st. So if you want to start right now, it's fine, but you will be billed that $5.95. I'm sure, I'm sure pretty much everyone knows that Comcast bills for one month in advance. So if you order it today, let's say it's installed on the 15th, you'll be billed until January 15th. There'll be a prorated credit back to January 1st at some point, you know, in, 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 in uh, the next billing cycle or so. All right, so I just want to make sure everyone is aware of that. It starts on January 1st where the platform fee is waived, okay? Uh, this presentation, I would say, try to hold questions. I'll be taking some questions afterwards. I believe it's ordered in a way that maybe if you have a question about one of the topics that I talk about, the next slide or two might address that question. So just keep that in mind. There is a few pieces of information. I see some people with notepads. I mean, we're going to be moving, I, I believe, at a fairly moderate pace to where you probably won't be able to take too many notes. There is a few pieces of information that I think are useful that I will, I will tell you about and you can jot them down. But in general, what I really want to stress, and you'll probably hear me say this a few times, is the X1 is a very intuitive system. So it's made to where you can really start using it and you can learn and it's very easy to learn. Okay, so, so, so just keep that in mind, and I would say to play around with it. That, that is the main key, is to explore the different options, see what they do, and I believe you will pick them up. All right, so, so we're going to get started. The first thing I want to do is just talk about the remote. Okay, so the remote obviously is different from the silver remotes, you know, that we had, you know, the last few years. I think it's a pretty good design, it's pretty ergonomic, it's like that new soft uh, plastic where it's not, you know, su super rigid, so it's pretty comfortable to hold. Um, the, the main keys of the remote are all centered in the middle. You have, you have that, that square, uh, that square silver box, which is your directional uh, keys, you know, up, down. Uh, side to side, you have the Xfinity button, which you, know, you see in the zoom bubble. The Xfinity button is the home button. Wherever you are in X1, if you want to get to the home screen, you would hit the Xfinity button. The other button that is right there in the middle is the blue microphone, which is the voice control. So that is the first major differentiator. Lots of people are talking about the voice control. Yes, you can talk to the remote. The remote will understand you. I know, I, I mean, me personally, when I first you know, heard about it, I was like, yeah, right, you know, it's, you know, you can say like two or three things like channel up, channel down, record, stop. Seriously, you can talk to the remote. You can say movie titles. You can say actors' names. You can say famous lines from movies. We're going to need a bigger boat. It's going to bring up Jaws. Uh, Franklin, my dear, I don't give a damn. It's going to bring up Gone with the Wind. It's very smart. It is very smart. To, to, to use the voice control, it's very simple. You hold down the blue microphone, point it at the screen. You will see a prompt on your screen telling you to talk. You talk, and it listens. It's very, very simple. Um, I think in general, the remote is pretty well designed. I mean, you know, the silver remote, a lot of people would always say the keys are just all over the place. It's hard to look at. It's hard to find keys. I mean, I think this remote is pretty well streamlined. So that is the Xfinity X1 remote. 
and we're going to talk a bit more about the functions of the keys. As you can see, there's letters uh, two rows down from the silver box. There's a row of letters A, B, C, and D. We will talk about those in the presentation. So, this is a screenshot of the home screen of X1. So we're talking about it being a fairly intuitive system to learn. If you look at it, it sort of resembles what you would now see on your cell phones, where you have the icons and everything is right, then, right, right there. Uh, that is how the X1 is. It's very intuitive. Um, on the top, you have, you know, you have the apps. Um, you have a row of apps on the bottom. We're going to go over some apps as well. Another thing I forgot to mention is we're going to go over some of the apps that are already available. I mean, you, know, you basically have access to these apps right now, and most of them integrate with X1. So I'm going to go over apps as well. Now, for those of you that have X1, and you're fairly detail-oriented. This is a bit of an older screenshot. You may notice that there is one app missing, and that app is the Netflix app. It's very good. I heard someone say it. All right, the Netflix app. Okay, so the first thing, and, and, this, and this is a big deal. We've been hearing about it for a long time. The Netflix is now integrated with X1. So how many people have Netflix here? Wow. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. I see why their stock's doing so well, I guess. Uh, all right, so, so lots of Netflix subscribers. Okay, so let's talk about Netflix in detail. Netflix right now is an app on X1. So when you get the X1 and you go to the home page, you will have the Netflix icon. It's already loaded up, okay? So to open up the Netflix icon, you simply select it, you click it, you press OK, you will be brought to this screen the first time only. This screen is asking you to sign in if you have an existing account, which everyone here does it seems, or if you want to join, you can open up a new account on this screen here. Signing in, you use your existing Netflix username and password, okay? Uh, this is a screenshot showing you how you would sign in. Um, it's a Netflix user ID, Netflix password. Basically after that, you will only have to sign in to Netflix one time. After that, when you, when you click on the Netflix app, it's automatically going to bring you to the program. So the way that the Netflix is integrated with X1 is the movies and the TV shows are available seamlessly alongside the movies and the TV shows that are on the X1 system. Okay, so, so, so most of you obviously have the DVR, you have On Demand. Everyone here has On Demand, right? So if you can imagine on On Demand, basically there being like a Netflix channel that's sort of what it's like. It's, it's seamless, you're not going to have a problem with it. A few things I want to talk about Netflix is the, the, the most important thing is Netflix is still completely separate from Comcast. I mean, basically, it is simply an app on X1. You know, we're not partners with Netflix. We didn't buy them. There, there's, no, there's no relationship other than it being an app on X1. So what that means, okay, now, when you have a Netflix account and you sign on to the X1, your Netflix bill is going to come on your Comcast bill. That's going to happen automatically. You do not have to do anything. Um, the Comcast billing is for convenience only. If you have any questions about Netflix either billing or about technical, you still call Netflix. They have a toll-free number. I have a website down there, netflix.com help. You call Netflix for, for basically anything related to Netflix. You know, if you have a problem, 
with Netflix and you call Comcast, they're going to say, we don't service the Netflix. Okay. You can opt to get a separate bill if you want. So you would get a Comcast bill and you would get your Netflix bill pretty much like you do right now. To do that, you would call Netflix. Okay, so, you know, so like I said, basically call Netflix for everything. The one thing I do want to point out that it hasn't been an issue per se, but I have heard of a few people doing it, is um, you want to make sure that you do not sign up for additional Netflix accounts. In other words, if you already have an account on that home screen, make sure you click sign in, not start a new account. Because if you click start a new account, it's going to start another account, and then you'll have two Netflix accounts. Okay? So just be careful of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so uh, that covers Netflix. Okay, so the other, uh, the other cool thing on the X1 that, that everyone talks about is the sports app. Now, I'm going to show you how to access the sports app in one second, but this is an app that basically, as you can see, this is a screenshot where there is a live hockey game, and you also have some stats on that hockey game. Now, it's an interactive app. You can look at other stats as well. Um, they're constantly updating it, so they're going to be adding more advanced stats, more sports. Uh, right now, it's it's a major sports, uh, you know, football, baseball, hockey, probably golf will be next. But it's an app that you can, you can use while you're watching uh, sports on live TV. Uh, you, you can view scores live. I mean, it, you know, it, it's, basically, it, it's basically an almanac. Um, you know, I mean, I can remember when I was single and I used to watch a lot of sports. Uh, this would have been something that definitely I would have, I would have liked. Um, so, to get to the sports app, you press the C button. Okay, remember I pointed out the, uh, the letters A, B, C, D? Okay, you press the C button. So everyone sees that highlighted? You can remember it, C to C sports. Okay? Okay, so you want to see the sports. Okay, so you can access the app even if you're not watching sports. So in other words, if you just want to, you know, if you're watching TV and you want to see the, game, uh, the, the score of the game, you can press the C button and you can see the score. And again, you know, it's, it's basically just meant to, to, to make the experience a lot more be a, 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 a lot better. Uh, you are more immersed in it. You don't have to flip through the almanac. It's basically right there. They're constantly updating it, so it's going to be more advanced. It's pretty advanced now. It's definitely going to be more advanced in the future. So that's the sports app. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is not an X1 app exclusively. It's available. It's going to be on the X1, but it's an app that you have right now or you do have access to it right now, it's the Xfinity My Account app. So quick question, how many people here do not like calling customer service for, for Comcast? All right. It's pretty much everyone. Okay. With the app, this app is designed to eliminate some of the more common reasons you would need to call customer service. It's not eliminating everything. Keep in mind, you do have the chat option on the website, but there might be some reasons why you would still have to call customer service, but this is going to eliminate a lot of the more common reasons. So on, on this app, which you can download onto your smartphone, the same way you would download any app, you just go to, to the place where you download apps, and you type in Xfinity My Account, and you download it. When you're using the app, you can pay your bills, you can troubleshoot common issues. If you have a box that is not working, you can troubleshoot that box. You can send a refresh signal to that box. Um, um, they, they, they are going to have the capability very soon 
where you can track your appointments. In other words, you know, it's common. I know that you have an appointment from, let's say, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Here it is at 2.45. The technician hasn't come yet. It's like, where's my technician? With the app, you can actually see the technician's ETA. It's not live. That particular portion is not live yet, but that will be soon. You can troubleshoot a device. Like I said, I mean, when you call customer service, you know, I'm sure you've noticed that they have a, a script, I guess you could say, that they go through. They have you unplug the box, plug it back in. They have you do this and that. Uh, basically, what they're doing is they're trying to refresh the box, and you can do that with the app. So again, you do not have to call customer service. You can do this first, see if it works. If not, you can actually schedule an appointment right from the app, okay? You can run live diagnostics. Again, this is, um, this is with, with, with the last screen. If your box is down, you can do a refresh signal, see if you can zap it to life. I mean, that's basically what the refresh signal does. It just, you know, just, just tries to get the, the communication in sync again. You can manage your appointment. This is a, 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 a beta screen. It, it's not live yet, but that's what it's going to look like. You'll be able to see basically where the technician is. So if he's running, I mean, you know, it happens sometimes. Sometimes you have an appointment, the tech is like an hour late, maybe you have a doctor's appointment, you can't wait, you got to cancel and reschedule it. But if he's going to be five, ten minutes late, maybe you'll wait around, it would, be, it would just be helpful to have the information. With the app, you can have the information. The app is available on the X1. So for instance, you can view your bill with the app on the X1. So that's just one of the features um, of the app that you can, you can view on, on, on screen. Um, okay, this app, like any other app, you need to have your Comcast username and password. I would say probably top five of the most common issues that I get asked about is, I don't remember my username and password, can you help? The answer for me is no, unfortunately I cannot. But you do have a website. Now, this is one point where if people want to take some notes, mycomcastid.com is a website where you can reset your password. Because unfortunately, it, it, you, you do need to reset it. If you don't know it, you just have to reset it. So you can reset your, your password and your user ID separately. Now, now, just to be clear about one thing, if you do not know your user ID, you do not know your password, you do have to call the customer service department, okay? So I'm, I'm going to go through the next few screens quickly. I want to get back to the X1, but this website is for your password. Um, this is a screenshot showing, you know, basically how you would go about resetting your password. It's very simple, you just follow the on-screen instructions. And again, if you do not know anything, your user ID or your password, you do have to call customer service. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is the X1 TV app. And this is what integrates the X1 with the cloud. Now this is another major differentiator of the X1 versus what you have right now. Okay, the DVR that you have right now is basically like a computer before there was internet. You had stuff on the computer, but it was stored on the computer. If your computer broke, if it crashed, if you spilled coffee on it, it was gone, okay? The stuff that was on it was gone. Um, the X1 is cloud-based. So um, the shows that you record are gonna be stored in the cloud. So in other words, what that means in in the real world is if your X1 breaks and you have to get a new X1, your, your shows are still gonna be recorded, okay? The other cool thing is you have this app you can download onto your phone or your tablet and you can, um, you can, um, you can watch the, the shows that you recorded on your phone or your tablet. 
Okay, so I mean, again, I'm going to move through this you know, pretty quickly because this isn't something that, to be honest with you, if you've never used it, you're going to be able to learn right here and right now. I just want to make sure you know that it is available. It's a capability. And again, I'm sorry if I repeat myself, but I would, I would say to play around with it. You're not going to break it or anything like that. I would say play around with it. So um, um, you download it like you download any other app. You sign in again, first time, every time you have to sign in your know, user ID and password. If you don't have it, I just showed you how to get it. Um, it goes through a pairing process. This is how the app knows what X1 box is yours. Again, I'm going to move quickly. Uh, the, the main menu, th th this is how, this is a screenshot of the app. Th you know, basically, if you don't want to do anything as far as like taking recordings to go, at the very least, if you download the app right now and you do not have X1, when you log into the app, you will see the programs you're subscribed to. So you can still watch on demand from your phone this very moment with this app. But once you have the X1, you'll be able to take, you know, you'll be able to take shows to go. Um, so I'm just going to move through it quickly. Um, you know, this is just showing you basically how to, to download the show. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say it's a cumbersome process, but there are steps which again, I, I, I don't think you'll be able to learn right now. Just, just keep in mind, it's something that is available. Okay, so, so we're just going to move through this pretty quickly. This is just steps you would, you would take to, to, to return a show uh, once you've watched it. Okay. The next app I want to talk about that is directly integrated with the X1 is the Xfinity Share app. The Xfinity Share app is a very cool app. Uh, let's say you know, you're know you sitting at home in Boynton Beach and your kids are up north in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, wherever, and they're at the grandkids soccer game. They have this app on their phone. They can stream the soccer game live to your X1 box. They can stream anything live to the X1 box. All right, so let me make sure, let me just explain that. So it's basically, think about like a telephone, except on one end you have the X1, on the other end you have the app, okay? So basically anyone can stream to your X1 box. They just have to have the app on their phone on their end. So just to talk about that a little bit, um, this is a screenshot showing the app. This is, this is the app for the person that initiates the stream. So we're just going to go through this quickly because, again, I, I would say most of the time probably it would be someone, in, I would say someone streaming to your X1 box. But this is how they do it. They open the app. There's a blue cloud. They click it. They press stream live. They go to contact. These screenshots are all one after the other. So, so once you click something, the next screen comes up. It's not anything that you have to find. Again, it's intuitive. It's designed to be easy to learn. You go to where you want to stream to, and um, you click stream. Now, okay, that's on the other end. On your side, you're watching live TV, or basically any TV, and this uh, screen pops up telling you that you have a, a stream that someone is trying to initiate. You simply press info to accept it. It tells you what to press. You press info on your remote and you're able to, to, to basically accept the stream. So that's the Xfinity Share app. And, 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 and I'm just showing you where the info button is. It's right under the, uh, the silver directional. Okay, then, then you click join. Okay, right, so now we're going to shift back to X1. I, I just wanted to segue and talk about the apps. I'm sorry about, I'm sorry if, if it got a little too technical for some people. Again, keep in mind, these apps are easy to use. Just use them. You'll learn them. You're not going to break them. Let's talk about some points about the X1 for people who are thinking about getting it. And if you already have it, 
some tips and tricks. So it's basically the same thing. Um, from the guide button, okay, now the center of the remote, if you remember, I pointed out the Xfinity button, which is your home screen. On the left of that um, button, it, it might be a bit hard to see, but there's a guide button. This guide button, I'm sure you all know the guide button, it's the same function you have right now. It's going to pull up the guide, they'll show you what's on live TV. When you press info twice, it's going to bring up a full description of the show. All right, so you can see a full description pressing info twice. When you're on the guide screen, you press the B button, it's going to bring you back to live TV. Okay, so, you know, for instance, if you're on the guide and you're trying to find something to watch and you've been on there for like five, ten minutes and you're wondering what's going on on the TV show that you were just watching, it brings up like a picture in picture. Um, when you press the guide button and you press it again immediately, it's going to bring up this cool screen here where you can really do a lot of stuff. Now, I was saying, you know, one of the top five things that I hear about is the user ID and the password. I would say up there also is closed captioning. There's a lot of confusion about closed captioning. People don't know how to turn it on. It's confusing. From this screen right here, it might be a bit hard to see. There's a text box. It, uh, that is where you go to turn closed captioning on and off. So you can do it with like two clicks. There's no all these menus, and it makes it very, very simple. There's some other stuff you can do. You can build favorite lists. So for instance, another thing I, I get asked all the time is can I narrow down the guide to only show my favorite shows? With this, you can, OK? Um, so this screen, there's a lot here. You press the guide. You press the guide again. I would say play around with it. There's a lot there. From your recordings, you can, you can delete very quickly by pressing the D button. Now, this is, again, the A, B, C, D. D is for delete. You press the D button, you can delete shows. The X1 records a tremendous amount of shows. You may find you have, like, 70 shows recorded, 70 movies, let's say, or maybe 150 shows, something like that. So if you ever get to the point where, let's say, you want to you, you wanna basically delete everything, the X1 makes it very quick. You just keep pressing D, 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 you go down the line, you delete everything. It's very, very quick. Just, just keep in mind D for delete. When you are watching your live TV, um, you can bring up a menu that's very simple. I do, I do want to back up one thing. I did make one mistake. I apologize. This is where you would turn off closed captioning. So again, you're watching live TV. You press the down button on that silver directional. You can quickly disable, you can quickly disable closed captioning among other options. It's a screen that pops up by pressing the down button. Just keep that in mind. The page up and page down button allow you to jump forward and back in the show in a very quick fashion. And I'm trying to highlight the buttons. I know it might be a little bit hard to see, but um, I would say this function is very useful. How many people, uh, let's, you know, let's do a scenario. You're recording a movie, and it's like a long movie, and you get you know, close to the end and you pause it to get, you know, a drink or something to eat, you come back and it's gone back to like the main screen. Does that happen to everyone? Yeah, okay. And then to add insult to injury, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes when you go to select it again, it starts from the beginning. It doesn't start where you left off. I'm sure that's happened to a few people, right? Okay, so it's normally a little bit of a pain because of course, as we all know, to fast forward, it's not really that fast. So if you're looking to fast forward two hours now, it takes like 10 minutes. This, you can fast forward two hours in like 20 seconds. It's a lot faster. You can fast forward, you can go back. With the page up, which I have highlighted, 
it's sort of like a, a loop, and page down is, is right under the, uh, the silver directional. The right arrow allows you to pull up a screen to show you what is on right now. I mean, so again, you know, let's, let's say you're watching something and you're sort of into it, but you know, not really, and you want to see what else is on, but you don't feel like going to the guide because you just want to keep watching TV. You can see it's basically pulling up a guide where you still have the bulk of the screen showing you the, the, the program that you're watching. That's the right arrow. The right arrow a second time shows you a listing for just a channel that you're watching. So again, maybe you're one of those people that has just a, you know, like a few favorite channels that you watch, you know, you know, let's say the Hallmark Channel, ESPN, stuff like that. You just want to see what's on on that channel. You press that right button a second time. The last button allows you to see the last nine shows or channels watched. That's big for a lot of people because, because again, you know, if you if you have a few a few channels that you watch, this is just one feature where you can quickly jump to a different channel. It just makes it very quick. The A button is a help menu. Now here is a point that I would just like to emphasize. The first thing that I recommend you do when you plug in the X1 is you press the A button and you go through the help menu on screen. That should be the first thing that you do. And you can remember it A as an A, I need help. It's corny, I know. But I would say press that, and you will see what's on screen. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, you'll have a help menu on screen. If you go through that, the, the, the help menu is, is basically going to teach you how to use X1. Okay, you'll be a whiz at X1 if you go through the help menu. You can search any screen anytime using the numbers on the bottom of the remote. You don't have to use a voice feature. That's something I hear a lot. People think you can only use a voice feature to search. You know, you can search shows using the, uh, the letters and the numbers. It works just like a keypad for a phone. So here's some final thoughts. I know we went through it quickly. Okay, I mean, again, this, this presentation wasn't supposed to teach you how to use X1, I would recommend that you press A. I really can't stress that enough. If you press A, if you go through the help menu, you will learn X1 in like an hour. Um, it's intuitive. Use it. Explore it. You're not going to break it. You're not going to wire money. You're not going to like launch nuclear codes, okay? Just, just use it. It's fun. And explore. The My Account app is a very cool tool. For those of you that don't use it, please use it. Here is a website if, if, if you do want to jot this down to, to basically give you, uh, this has a bunch of videos on X1. The same videos are available on the help menu by pressing A. So you might as well just sit down on the sofa where you're comfortable, press A, and learn how to use X1. I'm serious, you will, you will know X1. That's pretty much it. Thanks for your time. We're going to take some questions. This is going to be about X1 in general. Okay? Before we take some questions, I have the X1, and he, he scared the crap out of me because he probably explained it in too technical uh, a way for a lot of you. Um, I learned some new things from him, but if you don't have it, you probably didn't, as he indicated, you won't always understand. Let me, let me give you the, the layperson's basics. It's a, it's a DVR, the X1, and we're entitled to the, the main box and a satellite box. It's an any room DVR. What the main box does, the second HD box will do also. So you can actually record in both rooms, watch in both rooms, watch in one room and then switch and finish in the other room. Um, the, it has a much greater memory than the DVR you have now, so 
I just was away for three weeks, and when I came back, I was concerned that the shows I taped might not all have fit on the box, but I came back, I still had half of my memory there, so that, that's a very good feature. Um, I'm trying to think what else. For those of you who were, huh, you, excuse me? Yeah, you can, you can record four shows at the same time, and you might say, I wouldn't do that, but I've already done it, believe it or not. I didn't think I would. Um, what else? Yeah, yeah two, two people can watch different things in, on the, the other TV, obviously, at the same time. Um, it does everything that our current box does and more, and Seth might have scared you a little because this is what he does for a living. I could tell you it's, it's not that difficult. He showed some screens that I've had this for a year and have never seen, but it doesn't matter. You turn, you turn on your TV and you, you can watch whatever channel you want, change whatever channel. It's very easy to program. Um, you, get, you have the guide, you have a lot of the same things. I'm, I'm just telling you this so I didn't want you to be scared off and think this is only for a techie. I know when I bought my new car, the guy, the salesman gave me a half hour spiel of all these things, half of them you never use. But I'm, I'm gonna let him answer the questions. I'm trying to think of what else. If you have more than, if you were paying for more than two HD boxes, you can swap out, let's say, the third or the fourth for another satellite box. It won't cost you extra. So then you can watch in three different rooms or four different rooms. But if you, I'm not telling you he's giving you four. If you already are paying $9.95 for extra boxes, they'll swap those out for X1 boxes. All right, let, let Seth answer the questions. I, I'm sorry, I always, even That's when right. he comes every month, right. I always interrupt him. I shouldn't do it, but I get the impression that I have a little bit of a better feel of what this audience wants. Okay, it's a good point. Okay, so, okay, so we're gonna take some questions. I'm gonna move like from this side of the room down. And again, this is general questions about X1, not, not any problems that you specifically might have had. I mean, you know. Yes, sir. Is the communication between the two boxes done via Wi-Fi or over the cable? Um, well, the reason I'm is... The reason I'm asking is I don't always get good Wi-Fi signals in the other end of my house. If it's over the cable, yeah. I, it'll work fine. If it's not, I the, might, might not be able to use it. The boxes are plugged in, so the, the communication is through the wire. It's not yes. over no. a wire. It's not Wi-Fi. It's not Wi-Fi. Okay. If you obtain X1, do they give you a booklet that explains all of this? They do give you a booklet. I'm being completely serious. If you press A and you sit there and you watch the videos, you will master X1 in an hour. I, I'm, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't give you a better tip than that. Press A and you will know X1 in an hour. Thank you. Records four shows. Can you watch a fifth show at the same time? Live you're recording TV. four, that's the maximum. That's, that's going to max out the system. So then you want to watch a show, you can only live, you can only record three. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Do you have the measurements of the box itself? Not, not on me. Um, if it's, it's smaller than the DVR right now, or it's the same size. So I mean, if the DVR fits, it's going to fit. Okay. Charge for the satellite box. Sorry? Is there, is there a charge for the satellite box? No. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, this, so this is a good question. Okay. So, basically, the Valencia Isles contract gives the DVR and it gives two of the receivers. So, no. with the X1, you can get the DVR. And it gives one, it gives the DVR one HD box um, and I'm two sorry. little boxes. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you. Okay, I don't have the contract in front of me, so, okay, so luckily Terry knows. Okay, so 
you can get one X1 box and one companion, and it's going to be no charge on January 1st. What do we do with our existing box? Okay, so all right, so basically that's part of the install. The technician will, he's going to take the boxes back. If you opt for the self-install, you get a mailer. You, you basically, you can either bring the old box back to the X1 store on 441, or you can bring it to a UPS, and you basically just, just mail it back that way. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So that so that comes with a self-install kit. Okay. Yes. Um, is there going to be if if you have the smart TVs that have voice already, is there going to be a conflict with the voice on your um, podcast? Uh, a TV that has voice, I I actually have not heard of that. So yeah. okay. So so the remote has a voice. Your TV remote has a no, voice. No, no. The TV itself, you can you you can yell instructions to it. Um, that is one thing I have not heard of. Um, I will, I will jot that down. <laughs> let me, uh, let me, let me find that out for you. I will email that to Terry. Okay. Also, is there a limit on your storage or, or cost Well, for the yeah, apps? there's, there's definitely a limit. I don't, I don't off the top of my head know the exact amount. It's something like five or six times what you have right now. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a whole lot of storage. Okay. And is there a cost for any of the apps? Um, uh, besides the Netflix, no. Okay. Please. I have an old television without an HDMI outlet. Can you connect this box to such a television? All right. So. All right, so your TV does not have HDMI? Correct. No. Okay. No. The, the X1 only has HDMI. Thank you. Okay, so folks, just, just to make sure, because that's another good question. Okay, can so you, the Netflix can does you tell not us have... Us can you tell us how we get the box already? Can, how do can, we get can it? I tell you when you'll get it? How? How? I want it through self-installation. How do I get the box? Okay, so okay, so basically, okay, so the self-install, okay, folks, so the self-install option, what you would do is you would call customer service. You have to be qualified for self-install. There's a few factors. Everyone here might be, because basically, they they don't do self-install in like older houses where the wiring might be suspect. These communities are newer. Most of you are qualified for self-install. So basically, you call customer service, you order the X1, you say, I want the option to install it, and that's how you do self-install. Sure, now just to go back one second, Dennis, one second. The question that the, that the woman ants asked about the old TV. I know some people still have like the old tube styles, KV. Okay, this new box is HD only, all right? So if you have, if you don't have an HDMI on the back of your TV, you will not be able to hook up an X1 box to it, okay? Yes, go ahead. All right, if you already have the X1 box, yeah, uh, and you have the old remote, you have to turn in a remote to get the voice activated remote, question part one. And question part two is, is if you already have an X1 box for several years, is that the most up-to-date box that goes with the voice activated? Uh, if you've had it for several years, no. So it's, then you have to turn in the box yeah. if you're already an existing yes. X1 customer. Yes. And, and so, for instance, so you're talking about the, the voice control on the companion? Well, I'm talking about the whole unit. In other words, we have uh, an X1 platform in the bedroom and we have a high definition box. We didn't get the satellite box. So now if I turn in, if I go, they came into the house. So basically all I have to do is disconnect the boxes that I yeah. have, take them to, the, to a store and they'll exchange them for me? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay. And then they'll give me 
The newest one. The newest one with the newest remote. Yes. And then, but they want the old remote back too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. In speaking about smart TVs, how does the X1 interface with a smart TV? And if you don't have Netflix and have Amazon instead, are, do you have to use both controls to, to get the various apps on okay. the smart TV? Okay, so basically right now, the X1 integrates uh, just fine with the smart TV. I have not heard of any issues. The voice on the smart TV issue, that's a new one. I would venture to say that's not an issue simply because I haven't heard about it. But okay, so, so that's the first part of your question, no issues. Um, the apps such as Amazon, the current version of X1, you can't bring any of these like third party apps in. That's probably gonna be down the road. You're, I mean, basically what they're gonna be doing with the X1 at some point is the X1 is gonna be like the brain of the entertainment system, but that's sort of down the road. All right, so right now, if you have Amazon on your smart TV, you would still use your TV to, 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 to basically get to Amazon on your smart TV. That would be separate from the X1. Okay, so it's the other remote, the smart yeah. TV remote. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Just, just, just to reiterate, Two rooms are going to have HD and DVR capability. Both both rooms are going to have DVR capability. Is that correct? As far uh, as, yes. As far so, as we could. Well, okay, okay. So let me let me explain just to just to further clarify how this works. Okay, so the main box, you can initiate recordings on the main box. You can watch obviously on the main box. The companion box. You can watch a recording that you recorded on the main box. You cannot initiate recordings on the companion box. You can, can the, I? the new, the newer version of the box. I apologize. The newer version of the the, 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 the newer version of the box. You can initiate recordings on. I'm, I do apologize for so that. So is it four per box or four, four total for the two boxes? You can. Uh, it. it would be. That, that would be four per box, but you can only you can only record four at the same time. Okay, that's what, okay. So it's not four and four. You four at the same right, time. Right, right. That's okay. correct. Yes. One quick one quick other thing. How long does self-installation take? Is it just connecting the watt cables? Um, no, it's not really a lot of cables. It would just be the same thing as installing any other box. Thank you. You're welcome. If you currently have an X1 and you're paying the monthly fee, yeah. will that automatically be credited or do you have to contact Comcast for the credit? You should not have to come, well, there's not gonna be a credit per se. Okay, so basically the billing will stop on the first. Without contacting. Yes. Okay, that's all. If you want to, if you just want to pass that, you. you're welcome. If you don't want to have the box mailed to you, can you just pick it up at Comcast? You can pick it up at the store. Yes, that that's correct. And yes. that and that would solve the 9.95 fee. That would solve the 9.95. Okay, so that's that's a third option. Thank you for that. All right, so three options for install. You have the technician professional install, fifty dollars. Having it mailed to you, 9.95. Pick it up, free. Okay, and, and is it pretty self in, self explanatory to install it? Yes. Yeah. There's actually videos online on YouTube on how to install the X1. Thank you. So search X1 install. I recently became aware of something called TV ears. Is that compatible with X1? Okay. So that's. The, that's something I'm not familiar with. That's like a non-Xfinity product, TV ears. I, I mean, I, I have not heard of any um, problems with any third-party piece of equipment with the X1. So I would, I would say so. But it's compatible. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would, uh, I, I would call the manufacturer of that particular product. Yes. I have a few questions. Okay. Uh, the $50 install, is that for one TV or for both? No, that's, no, 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 that's going to be for the entire install. Okay. I have DVDs on Netflix, not streaming. Do I need to convert to streaming, or can I just use my existing account? That you would call Netflix for. Um, okay. And if you want to set up an appointment for e after the beginning of the year so you don't get billing, how do you do that? Um, I believe you can call right now to set up an appointment that would take place after January 1st. They, they may tell you it's a little bit too early. I mean, I mean, normally they don't do it more than like two or three weeks out. So if anything, you just call closer to January 1st. Okay. And if you have one HDTV and the second TV is not HDTV, if you record something on the HDTV, can you view it on the non HD well, I mean, if you don't have an HD TV, you're not going to be able to plug in the X1. So, okay, so again, the X1 only plugs in to an HD TV. Okay, and the last question is, when you install this, you change out the box, you change out the remote, correct? Uh, yes. It's Does a brand that affect the internet service or the telephone service in any way? Should not. Should not. I mean, basically, I would say, you know, you know, from a practical standpoint, if you have if 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 you have concerns, it would probably be a smart investment to just spend the fifty dollars and have the tech do it. No, I'm going to do that, but yeah. I just wanted to know. Oh, yeah. no, no, is no, that going to slow up the speed of the no. internet connection no. or anything? No. Thank you. You're welcome. I do not have a card on me now. Uh, what do we What do we do with the old content on the boxes? Does that disappear? Uh, the old content on your current boxes does disappear. Again, you know, keep in mind, you know, like I said, the DVR that you have right now, it's like the computers from the 80s before the internet. You, you know, if you had a file on that computer and you got a new computer, there, there really was no practical way, but, 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 but on, on the DVR there is not. Can, All right. I keep, can I keep that old box as well as the new boxes? You can, you'll be billed for it. How much? It'll be $20 a month. If, if you want to, I have two boxes, uh, and I also have two additional smaller boxes on two other C TV sets. I can't. I can't really hear. I'm sorry. You can't hear me. I can hear you now. Okay. I have the two uh, uh, Comcast boxes, and I have two additional smaller boxes. Okay. Uh, how do I get the system to work on all four TVs? Okay. So okay. So right now, you guys have the DTAs, which are like small boxes. They're on the size of a cell phone, yeah. right? That's what you're talking about. Yeah, and it's uh, connected by regular... Yeah. Uh, Those boxes are separate from the X1. They have nothing to do with X1. So, I mean, let's, let's just say you wanted to replace those boxes with X1. Right. That would be a charge, $9.95 per box per month. Okay. Very good. And you would just specify that when you call customer service. Uh, presently, I have two DVRs and two HD boxes. How do I translate that into the X1 system, uh, and what do my costs be for additional boxes? Okay, so you have you have two DVRs, two DVRs and, two and two HDs. Okay, so okay, so basically, again, the contract gives a DVR and a receiver. So the single X1 box and the companion are included. Basically, every additional box would be $9.95 per month per box. The additional boxes, other than the main box, does not record. You can record on the additional boxes, yes. Oh, is that something new? You didn't say that? That is something new. That's, that's a, newer, it's, it's oh. a newer box. When you call right now, you're going to get the newest equipment, so you, you won't have a problem with Will that. Will they be able to see in each room, or you, you can record independently? You'll be able to see them in every room. That, that's the point. That's but you can record independently. Yeah. Okay, so it's nine ninety five for two extra satellite boxes. Yeah, each. that's exactly okay. each. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. I think I understand. For the um, HD M1 box, that goes on the main TV. Now, for the satellite, can we use a set that doesn't have HD? No. 
You can't, no, okay. It won't plug in at all. No. Okay. All right. It's only for HD. So, so if you don't have an HD TV. For the satellite. Um, this is the satellite. For the satellite, you can't plug in. It does not have a coax cable. The coax is what, you know, plugged into the non-HD. So the X1 does not have a coax hookup. It only has HD. It, okay. It just has the HDMI. HDMI I need. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. If you push the button for Netflix, yeah. is there a charge for using Netflix? Uh, just what you normally pay. Suppose I don't have Netflix. What's the charge? Uh, not sure about that, to be honest with you. I actually do not have a Netflix account. I mean, again, that's, that's basically a Netflix question. I... Not sure if anyone happens to know the charge for Netflix. Something probably like 10, 15 bucks. I presently have Netflix, but I receive them in the mail. I receive a disc. Yeah. It's not streaming. Yeah. So, so but now I could get it streaming. Yeah. It, and Netflix will be able to transfer my account over to that. Uh, well, uh, well, yes, but basically, but basically, but basically, it's simple. In that you, in, 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 in that you would just press the Netflix icon and log in. I mean, that's that's all you have to do. It's nothing that Netflix has to transfer over. It's going to be automatic. So what I would suggest you do for your question is I would suggest you call Netflix and you say, basically, here's what I'm interested in. How much is it going to be per month? And they'll answer the question. And then you sign up for that package. And when you get X1. That's a service that will be on your X1 box. But I'll still get billed from Netflix. Right? No. No. Who, who do I get billed from? The Netflix charge is going to be on Comcast by default. If you want to receive a separate bill, you would call Netflix. So I'll get a separate Comcast bill. Because oh. I don't get any Comcast bill yeah, now. See, okay, so yeah, so yes. Okay, so you will get a Comcast bill where the only charge will be Netflix. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I have a question about the new remote. Yeah. On our TV, we weren't getting a full picture. And I had the black remote, not the silver one, but the black one, which was the next version. I happen to have a silver one. It has a zoom in and zoom out. Will the new remote have a zoom in and zoom out on your picture? Zoom in and zoom out on the X1. Well, you can uh, you can change the aspect ratios. Couldn't do it with the black remote that they gave me a Comcast. So we, until we found the zoom remote. The yeah. Zoom. Okay. So basically, the question is, does the X1 have a zoom feature? Off the top of my head, that's one thing I'm not sure about. I believe you can play around with the aspect ratios. Do it from like widescreen to full screen. We tried with the black one. Couldn't do any well, of no, those I'm things. I'm talking about the newer X1 yeah, remote. So I'm pretty sure you can play around with the aspect ratios. With, with the X1, you said it, we have a, a, one of those small boxes in a, a fourth bedroom. Yeah. Will that box not work anymore? It'll still work, but it's it, still work. it's still going to work. It's just separate from X1. It's just live TV. It, yeah, it, it's just separate from the system. Thank you. It's going to work the same way it does right now. You're welcome. How many satellite boxes can you add to this X1? Four. Oh, you can add four. Is each one an additional charge? The three, the three extra will be additional. So, okay, so, all right, so one, so you would get one DVR, you would get one satellite. Right. If you wanted three extra, 9.95, it's gonna be per box per month. Per box? Yes, for the extra. Otherwise, we leave the other TVs with the black little box on there, like the size of yourself. Yeah. That's correct. So you can't transfer any of the things from the X1 to the other two TVs? With the DTAs, the small ones, no. No, th those are completely separate. So it's got to run you $9.95 per TV if you want to switch it to other TVs. If you want extra, yeah. Okay. And you can talk to this remote and tell it to record programs? Yeah. Yeah. Just tell them the program and it'll automatically do it. Well, 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 okay, so the way that works is if you're watching a program yeah. that you want to record, you just say record, and it'll record that program. No, it's, not, it's not quite, I, I, yeah, it's, it's not quite advanced where you could say, 
uh, record Law and Order on Monday afternoon at 8 yeah. p.m. Right, you it's can't not quite do that. there now. So you have to preset it again. Yeah. So all it is is for the recording that you, to record what you're watching at that moment. As far as the voice feature, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I have two TVs and two DVRs. Okay. Now, I don't have, could it possibly be X1 or is it just X? Well, um, do you have a voice remote? I'm I mean, sorry? The, the remote that I was showing on screen, do you have that? Do I have what? I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean uh, basically you're asking if you have the X1 right now? Yeah. Did any of the screens that I show look familiar to you? Then, then the, the you probably don't have the X1. Remote, yeah, no, no, in other words. Then okay. you don't have X1. So. Yeah, yeah, you want to get that remote switched out. Um, you, you, can, you can go down to the Wellington store right now and switch that remote. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what box you have. I mean, you would, you, you know. Yeah, but, but, but there's different versions as well. But, okay. So if I have, right now I'm recording in two locations. Yeah. But I wouldn't be able to do that unless I pay, right now I pay $5 a month. No, no, well, no, 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 I mean, for the extra, for the extra okay, so one. basically right now you have two DVRs. The X1 and the Companion are basically two, D, are, it's, it's basically going to be the same thing. It's two DVRs. Okay. So that's going to stay the same. So the X1 is a much better system, though. Well, so In other words, and there won't be any fees for that? Uh, starting January 1st, no. On starting January 1st, there's no monthly fees. There's even, an if I have, even for two v DVRs? Uh, no. No, no, no. Okay so, okay, so you're paying... Okay, so this situation, yeah, this is definitely going to work for you. Because you're paying, what, an extra nine ninety five for the second DVR, right? Yes. You should be. Okay. So, if you choose to do nothing on January 1st, you will still pay nine ninety five. What you should do is switch to the X1, and then that 995 charge is going to go away. For two and, DVRs? Well, it's a DVR and a companion, but, but, but the companion is a DVR. So for all intents and purposes, it's two DVRs. Now, maybe I misheard, but you can't record from both DVRs? If it's you can record one? from both DVRs. Yes, you can. You can? Yes. Okay, yeah, so yeah. it's the same system. It's, it's the same system. Stuff. Well, I mean, you know, it's more stuff and you'll be saving money on a monthly basis. You do pay the install fee, but you're saving money on a monthly basis. And it's a much better system. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I think. <laughs> Can you hook up a DVD machine to it? Well, the DVD would still be, would still be hooked up like it is right now. You know, so, so basically at this point, in technology, everything is routed directly to the TV, right? That's, that's how it's hooked up. Your, your DVD is hooked up to your TV directly? Yes. It's going to stay the same. I know, I, I, I can remember when everything used to go through the VCR, that that's older. You know, that, that's much older. But can so basically, you use the same remote for, to, the, to for the DVD player? Uh, I, don't, I don't think you can program the X1 remote to control a DVD player. I mean, depend. No, so I, I don't. So then you have so. to use a separate remote for. Use it. a separate remote. Basically, I mean, it's a completely different input. Because so I you have it all hooked up together now with a special remote. Okay, so so you have like something you bought like a Best Buy, like one of the right. universal remotes. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's one thing that would probably be different, because the universal remote is not going to be able to give you the full functionality of the X1. So I'd have to use two remotes. Yes, that's correct. Thank That's you. correct. You're welcome. Uh, you've, an you've answered this about 10 times, and it's still not clear. Um, I have one 250N box and three 150N boxes, total of four. I only pay now for two of them, 995 Right. If I switch out all four, what is my monthly charge? It's going to stay the same. It's going to save. It's going to stay what you're paying right now. Okay. And the other charge the question was, and again, you, I know you've answered this several times. The installation charge of fifty. All four boxes will be switched out for the same fifty dollars. 
Yeah, I mean, basically, when you call customer service, you want to specify what you want. I mean, if you want all four boxes switched out, that's fine. They'll do it. Just make sure you specify it. Okay. But it's not, it's not going to be $200. Sorry? No. Not, okay. Now, um, we have Amazon on our smart TV. Can we still get that, the Amazon movies? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so basically, uh, that particular function is, is going to be with your TV remote. That's not going to be integrated with X1. Okay, so it'll be with the old TV remote or it'll be someplace on the X1 it's remote? It's not going to be on the X1. Okay, so we keep the old remote. Definitely, okay. yeah. You're welcome. Regarding voice activation. Yeah. Uh, does voice activation uh, operate volume? Volume. The volume. volume. Uh, you can do volume up, yes. Volume up, volume down. Okay, so now I have a set that's in furniture. And right now, my remote yeah. can't operate that. I need to go to the set yeah. and do it, or I have to put on that little box. The, what happens now? The, the new X1 remotes are designed to go through a piece of furniture. I love you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hi. Uh, I just have a question. I have the, uh, I believe it's the X1 because I have the voice activated. Is that yeah. right? That's the X1. And I also have a companion box. Okay. And I have two smaller boxes in different rooms. Okay. Is that what I'm, can I, do I upgrade the, uh, uh, the other ones? Or that is exactly what I need? It's, yeah. That's it? You basically have the X1 system. I have everything system. I need. Yeah. Oh, good. And then the, my second one, do you have the, fl the uh, brochure on the channels? Um, I'm going to bring those in uh, from, from my car, actually. So if you go to the front desk you know, later on today, it's going to be there. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. I'm sorry if it's a stupid question. No, no. I have one HD TV, okay. and I have DVR or whatever you call it on that TV, and that TV is up on the wall. Okay. So in order to do, I have two questions. In order to do the installation of this new whatever, they're not going to have to take the TV off the wall, are they? Well, no, and in fact, they're not supposed to. Basically, I mean, the official company policy is our technicians are not supposed to touch any equipment that is not Comcast. So they're, they're not supposed to move furniture or take TVs off walls. I mean, that's the official company position. They have to do okay. And put in the new box. Okay, so now here's my second question. Okay. For my second TV, which is in my den, that is not an HD TV. So I am planning between now and January 1st mm -hmm. to go out and buy a new HD TV. Yeah. They want $169 to deliver and install this new TV. Should I be doing that? Is that totally separate from the installation that Comcast is going to do, or am I going to be repeating a charge for installation? Well, I mean, the install that we'd be charging is just to install the X1 system. So, I mean, you're talking about basically having a TV delivered. So, yes, it is two separate things. Okay, now, so I need to have that TV delivered and installed. Delivered, yeah, delivered. Brand smart. They want 89 to deliver it. They want 169 to deliver and install. So if I do that, then I'm going to pay another $50 for the install. It's not big. It's 20, uh, 32. Well, that's what I'm asking. In other words. That's what I'm asking. When the Comcast guys come, will they set the TV up with the installation? I'll let Terry answer that. I'm answering. Yeah. Give the Comcast guy a few bucks. He'll take it out of the box and do it for you. Yeah, you think that's possible? Okay. All right. You didn't hear from me, though. Please. Thank you. So I have the X1. I have this. I have the companion in my bedroom, but you cannot rewind a show as you can in the main TV? Uh, um, you probably have the older companion box in that case. How long have you had it? 
Three years. Yeah, it's definitely the older oh. one. The newer one has that capability. So now I'm going to ask for them to replace that. Is that correct? Yeah, no, no, you can, you can, if you already have the X1 installed, it's, it's very simple to swap out the box. It's basically just for like a new installation. Sometimes it gets a little bit dicey, but okay. if you already have it installed, you can unplug the box, bring it to the store, bring the remote, they'll give you the new box and the new remote, you just plug it in. Which one, the main one or the? the uh, closest. The satellite yeah. one. Yeah, just the satellite. Just you know satellite. what, I'm gonna call them. So you can rewind on all of your, then I have two with, DVRs. In with all the, the newer other one, yeah, that's correct. So just, they'll, I'll just call them, tell them to replace the whole thing and. Well, they, they'll send you something that's gonna be a self-install kit charge. It's gonna be a shipping charge. I mean, you know, it's completely up to you. All right, so I have to go there. They all will right. even, they'll, they'll even come out and swap it, but that's gonna be $50. But I, I pay a fee every month for them to, I pay an extra fee so that if I have any problems, they come in without a charge? Um, yeah, so, the service protection charge, um, that, that, that does not cover this. I mean, that, that's, yeah, yeah this, is, okay. this is separate. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we want to does, the, does the new remote have an auxiliary button to, for my amplifier? Um, hmm. Do you happen to know that, if it has auxiliary? Yes. Can I make an appointment with you? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, if we pay for installation, is the installer going to teach us how to use the remote control? Uh, yeah. Obviously, obviously. I, I mean, he's, he's not, he's not going to go through like a, a whole like 30 minute thing. Yeah. But, but again, whenever something like this like I, I mean, I would, I would, I would, I would seriously say, if if you press A and sit there, you will know how to use everything. Yeah, I, I understand that, but is there any paper instructions that come with the X1 um, box? There, it's there's some, there's some flyers. You know what? I, I can get, I can get X1 flyers. I don't have any on me today. I can get them. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be up in the area probably early next week. If you check back at the front desk, I say mid next week. I will make sure there's some X1 flyers there. Yeah, whatever information. I mean, yeah. not everybody wants to sit and play with reading online. Sometimes you read some stuff; it's easier. It's also videos too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no. No. But but, but, that, but that's what's on the A button. It's also well, videos. that I understand. But it's nice to have some basic sure. instructions in writing. You. Thank yeah. you. Yes. No problem. Quick question. Yeah. When they install the X1 box, does that mean we lose all the programs? We've saved with our present box? Yeah, that's correct. It does? Yes. Okay. Any way of saving those programs? Or? You would just have to, you'd have to keep the box and pay extra for it. So oh. I would say if you're planning on doing the X1, just wind down the recordings, watch, you know, what you have recorded because, because when the technician takes that box, that's where your recordings are. He's taking, the, he's taking your recordings, basically. Gotcha. I heard you talk about Amazon. I didn't hear you talk about Apple TV. I have sort of the old kind of Apple TV where to go to Apple TV, I have to use my TV's own remote to switch. I don't imagine anything would change with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have not heard of any issues with the X1 basically you know, not being compatible with any manufacturer of TV or any of the major, uh, whether it you know, be with, whether it be Apple TV or or pretty much any of the third-party manufacturers. It's not incompatible, but but, the new, but it also sounds like there really is no advantage either. I'd still have to continue using my TV remote in order to switch from well, I mean, like DVD you, or to Apple TV. Yeah, and, and see, I don't. I actually don't have Apple TV either, so I'm not <laughs> I'm not terribly familiar with it. But but you but you use like the on demand through Xfinity now, right? Or do you? Uh, I can use yeah, I can get the on demand, but that's but yeah. That's, I mean, basically, basically that's in your system. Sure, sure, but I'm but, but basically what I'm saying is any anything that you use 
the Xfinity equipment for, you know, this, this new X1 is like 10 times better. So, I mean, considering that basically the board has negotiated it where it's no charge, you know, except for the install, you're probably better off doing it, and there's no issues that I've heard of as far as not being compatible. Okay, I mean, okay, thanks. Okay, I mean, I would, I would say, you know what, you know what I would say for that, you know, for, for, for that question specifically, is maybe try to hop on like an Apple forum, I'm sure there's tons of them, and see if there's any threads as far as Apple TV with Xfinity X1. I would say some info should be on there. I have a single remote control that works my whole setup. Yeah. Do you know whether this is adaptable to this X1 box? All right, so basically you're saying that you have a like universal remote? Yeah, this, I forget what the brand is. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to use a universal remote, but, but all the features, I mean, if you notice, basically, basically everything that I talked about in this presentation was based on a remote function. So yeah. a lot of these, like, 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 like you're not going to have the voice control, obviously, you know, all the different features, page up, page down, the directional keys, you're not going to yeah. have that. But as far as you know, recording, like if you want to go to guide or stuff like that, you know, yes, you will be able to use that. I'll be able to, yeah, because on my remote, I, I have karaoke hooked up to the unit. I have yeah. DVR recording to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would say your best experience would probably be to keep the X1 remote handy. I mean, I would just keep it there because, again, there are a lot of, right. of little shortcuts that are integrated with the remote. Okay. But it should be adaptable. It should, should be adaptable. I, ha I, okay. I have not heard of any issues with it not being compatible with any known manufacturer. Okay. Thank you. Can I just get an X1 for main TV and keep my reg existing DVR for the uh, other one? Uh, technically, you could, but I mean, I don't. The reason I would keep the other one is the other TV is not HD. Okay, so yes, yeah, you could, you you could have the X1 to stand alone. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now, if that's the case, and you only and you only order one, uh, uh, the DVR, uh, but you can't use it because your other sets are, are, are not HDTV. Yeah. When, um, and you want to make a change, then you can pick up the other box or ask the other person, uh, the uh, technician to bring in the other box. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. When you buy another TV that's compatible. So uh, in other yes, words, you, you, can, you can add to the, yeah. Right, one yeah. HD TV with the uh, new box and then the other three televisions that are not HDTV can, uh, you can use them as they're set up yes, now. Yes, you can add to it later, yeah. You can add to it later. Yeah. Each time they come, they can well, yeah, it yeah. Yes, yes, that, that, that's true. Right, so, right. Yeah, it's $50 per install. So if you get, if you get, you know, three different TVs installed at different times, it's going to be 50 per install. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, adapter boxes. We have two when we pay for a third. Will that okay. stay the same, or will there be a change in price on that? Okay, so you, uh, you'll still pay for the third. Still pay for the third, yeah. and the price will remain the same. Yes. Okay. That was my question. Okay, We're yes. still paying the 399 for the extra DTA. Yeah, yeah. That's, gonna, that's not going to be free for, not, for, a, for a, I should say, digital DTA, not analog DTA. Uh, that is, yeah, yeah, that's still going to be extra. The, okay, yeah, because yeah, the, that, that portion of the contract is not... The, the analog the, DTAs are free, the digital DTAs are not free. The, the high definition, right. Whatever you're, whatever you're paying for, you know, separately, yes. Because when I switched out the analog to a digital DTA, yeah. they charged for the digital that, yeah. DTA. Yes. Okay. So, is there any other questions? Yes. Is there anything else? Uh, 
soon, but I, I, I don't have I don't have any uh, date specifically. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Because, because because that's over and above the contract. Yeah. So it's still going to be that way. For the right. That's right. You do not. One time, fifty, no monthly. 